Okay, guys. Okay. All right. Now we're back down here, and I've got the air box all removed. And that was in my earlier video. I did go ahead and move this hose out of the way, the pair valve, and it clicks onto the side here with a little bracket. So I kind of moved it out of the way, but now here are two hoses that I used. I've used these before when I was synchronizing carbs and all. Uh, so I have now come around with the uh, throttle body cable and I uh, found the sink ports uh, on the rear and the front and guys they I don't know if I can show you on the video but let me just tell you that once you see the butterflies follow the center of that butterfly down you're gonna see one cable plugged on top and right underneath it is gonna be that what you're looking for all right and same thing over here just kind of follow the center down till you find the first line that's in and look right up under it there'll be a cap they're capped off so we're going to make extension pieces and this has been done on several videos and I've done this before on car bikes uh, to make it easy to access in the future to synchronize these throttles. Just like we used to synchronize our old carbs, this makes it a lot easier to access with everything intact, including being able to fuel feed the bike from the gas tank. Now if you remember in the old carburetor days, We'd pull that fuel line off and we'd use a little bucket. Here's one I've used in some of our past videos here. This little Pittsburgh bucket. I'd fill it up with gas and I'd spoon feed the, the carbs so I could synchronize them. Well, what we're gonna do in this bypass here is we're gonna extend those hoses. Now, I made my rear one hose a little longer. I'm gonna label so I know which is front and which is back. Whoops. And, uh, then what I'm gonna do, ultimately, at some point before I finalize and close all this up and be done with this bike and servicing, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna get this here carb tune kit that I bought some time back. And I'll have to do your video, but if you go back and look at some of my old videos of where I synchronized carburetors, you'll see the processes are pretty much the same. I'm gonna put that on there and I'm gonna synchronize that. We want these cylinders to each be fed equally uh, for make for a smooth throttle, smooth response, smooth ride. Uh, so I did that bypass while I was here and I'll come back and label them even though I know now with the longer cable, but I'm gonna tee these off because I'm not gonna leave them open. I'm gonna tee them off and then when they're needed, I'll open them up and use them. So, and uh, I think that's about a one eighth. I don't remember the size exactly of that, but I bought these before uh, when I was using it for carbs. So, okay. So now then tomorrow, what I'm planning to do is go ahead and do my bypass on my uh, external fuel filter. So I've already ordered the dormant parts and I'll now do another video on that for you. Okay, but throttle synchronization is what we're talking about. Now, I know that sometimes people get interested also in uh, adjusting these butterflies uh, so that they're time uh right. Now, in the old days, what I would do on a carburetor is I would shine light underneath the butterflies and make the manual adjustments. Now I've seen some people do manual adjustments where they use like a, uh, a little uh, needle and they'll sit there and adjust their butterflies that way just to make sure they're, they're the same, you know. Uh, and like I said, I have done it before where I've had the carbs off and I was manually bench, I guess you'd call that bench sinking, sinking the carbs where I would uh, just use light. So, uh, but I'll do that in the last step too. 
But anyway, hopefully this is helpful. Now this is again, is a V-Strom 1000. These principles apply to all motorcycles for the most part. Uh, this is a 2008 version. So hopefully this is helpful.